Hello again, everyone. Hello. Today's episode is special in many ways. We will talk about a few historical figures of electricity and the battles of science between them. And throughout our dialogue, I will be taking questions from a few special guests at the Museum of Modern Art in Paris, home of La Fée Electricité. Artist Raoul Dufy painted the portraits of 110 scientists and inventors who contributed to the development of electricity. Say hello! Hello! But before we exchange a few questions about the giants of modern science, don't forget to subscribe below. Okay, question number one, kids. When you think of electricity, what's the first name that comes to mind? For me, it's Thomas Edison. All right, let's talk a bit about Edison. Known for his many inventions and patents, such as the light bulb. But have you ever heard of direct current? It's a system that Edison and his company patented for electric distribution. They first used direct current to supply 59 customers in Lower Manhattan. This distribution or network played a huge role in how we utilize power supply. Today, DC networks are used to power public rail transport and elevators in the towers of mega cities. Without it, we may not have the power grid as it operates today. Do we still use direct current to power our houses? Actually, we don't. Though this system was ahead of its time, it still had some drawbacks. When Edison tried to distribute power longer than a mile, his networks would start losing voltage. Then came the competition with the new current and transformers. In the world of electricity, there is also George Westinghouse Jr. He's lesser known than his famous counterpart, but played an equally important role in the development of power distribution. After discovering a new technology from Europe, the AC, or alternating current, Westinghouse returned to the US and lobbied for it to be the primary method of electrical distribution. Why did you like the AC myth so much? Great question! The AC method had a lower cost and technological advances. It could distribute electricity longer and farther, giving it the ability to supply lesser populated suburban areas. But Westinghouse's AC put him in direct competition with the DC of Edison. No pun intended. This led to, let's say, a friendly competition known as the Current War. The era ended with financials and settlements. But let me ask the kids, who do you think won the war? AC or DC supporters? Thomas Edison was his direct current. Good guess, but actually no. Many people don't know that this was the battle Edison lost. Technically, it's never simple with electricity. And Westinghouse had a little help from another electrical genius, who obtained the rights of an AC induction motor and a new distribution method using polyphase alternating current from none other than Nikola Tesla. What is so special about Nikola Tesla? Once an employee of Edison Machine Works, Tesla was a futurist at the cutting edge of electricity in the late 19th and early 20th century. He was a showman of sorts, spoke a handful of languages, and believed that curling his toes would stimulate brain cells. Most of all, he was an innovator, and his induction motor ran alternating current through a power system that became popular in the US and Europe. The system used a polyphase current which generated a rotating magnetic field to turn the motor. What's more, this self-starting motor 
did not need a rotary switch, making it more economically sound. After selling his patent to Westinghouse, Tesla had enough wealth to pursue his personal curiosities in electrical science. In Colorado Springs, he conducted endless experiments with large coils that would produce artificial lightning and thunder. So, what do you think, kids? Is DC a thing of the past? Not at all. Electricity does not only deal with distribution. Most of your appliances, especially those including a battery, are powered with DC your smartphone or camera. This is why you plug into the AC outlet a cable with a small black box, including a small converter to deliver DC to the equipment. Does DC exist for high voltage systems? Yes! DC is used to transmit huge amounts of power on continental distances at extra high voltage to minimize the losses. A converter station at both ends of the link covers an area larger than a stadium. But millions of people can be supplied by these links. For example, in China, a recent overhead line transmits 12 gigawatts over 3,300 kilometers between hydropower dams in the west and megacities in the east. 50 million households get electricity. Some underground and submarine cables are designed to operate in DC under a voltage of more than 500 kV. They are used to interconnect countries, islands, and even offshore wind parks when they are generating power more than 70 km away from the coast. So the current war is still going, isn't it? Exactly! We are trying to be the worthy successors of Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla in developing innovative AC and DC systems. Well, who's your favorite scientist of the progressive era? For me, it's Thomas Edison, Westinghouse, Tesla. Me, I like them all. Thanks for your help, friends. Enjoy the museum. A good Goodbye, Frederick. Thank, Thank you. you. When it comes to electrical distribution, the turn of the 20th century was a pivotal time for advancements in electricity. The current war created a competition involving three giants in the industry, Thomas Edison, George Westinghouse Jr. and Nikola Tesla. Edison pushed to promote his direct current, whereas Tesla and Westinghouse teamed up to promote their alternating current. Combined, these men account for around 1,500 patents. So what about you, viewers out there? Who is your favorite of the three electricity giants? Any name we missed? Take a live or virtual visit of La Fée Electricité and feel free to drop us a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.